as we stand here today for the Republicans who will be voting on September 9th, he just told you that he's a proud, lifelong Republican. We have Board of Elections files to show otherwise, but that stated, he's a Democrat-endorsed candidate who just accepted a quarter of a million dollars, is being supported by a quarter of a million dollars from a top Democratic fundraiser who demands from his candidates, among other things, that they support gay marriage and a transgender bill that is so extreme you wouldn't believe it. A top Democratic activist is not getting involved in this Republican primary because they're hoping to support his Republican credentials. The reason why I bring that up is because just like when you go to play a sport, the first thing is you figure what team, what side you're going to play on. It's kind of important. In the New York State Assembly, you can either fight with us on the Republican side of the aisle with Jimmy Tedisco and against the corruption and against the tax increases, against the bloated budget, or sit under the thumb and rule of that huge gorilla, an entirely despicable man, Sheldon Silver. To this day, my opponent has still not decided which side. And he stands before you talking about tax reform, the single most important issue to the people in this district, and still, after months of campaigning, does not have a clear objective. Unfunded mandate relief, number one. Number two, the circuit breaker that we just passed could be part of a comprehensive bill. And number three, the most important part, is a property tax cap. I have over 300 bills in the New York State Assembly. I have over 30 bills that I'm prime sponsors on, and over 20 that we've passed with my name on it through the New York State Assembly. The most important bill that I'm a co-sponsor on is a property tax cap bill in the Assembly that before us in the Assembly, and yes, here in this district, we began to push the property tax cap bill, wasn't gaining steam. Massachusetts instituted Proposition 2 and a half. They were called Taxachusetts in the 1980s and had that dubious honor that we have today, being number one in the nation overall tax burden. They instituted Proposition 2 and a half, which was a two and a half cap, and they're now number 23 in overall tax burden, and their educational rankings have increased. When you show up to Albany, you should have a plan. I do. Okay, we're up to question number three, and on this one, <clears throat> excuse me. For once I thought ahead. You've never been quiet. <laughs> Not with the water. Uh, question number three, and for this one, Mr. Ball goes first. Uh, the next several questions are not so simple, are not so simply stated, but then again, these are complex times we're in, to say the least. New York State Governor David Patterson, a Democrat, says New York faces a fiscal crisis, you think? He has asked the legislature to cut $600 million in spending. Assembly Leader Sheldon Silver, also a Democrat, has a different solution. He proposes a so-called millionaire's tax that passed the assembly. Which solution do you support? Recently, there have been mailers sent out that state that I voted against the STAR program, I voted against uh, various initiatives. Uh, they say I voted against sunny days and smiley faces and puppy dogs. The budget that we passed this year uh, was nearly a $130 billion budget. As a freshman legislator, I talked to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and realized that because of the funny revenue projections, that budget would be absolutely incomplete. It was based on wrong projections. The year before, the budget we passed was the largest increase in state spending in New York State history. This budget we just passed had a billion dollars in new tax increases. High spending equals high taxes, and we need more and more members to stand up and vote against these budget proposals. But what you're seeing in my re-election bid is they break out all the good things in the New York State budget and try to paint you as being a horrible person. I said on the floor of the legislature uh, and in committee at that time that we would force to be back because of the economy to redo this budget. What happened? Exactly that. We have to make tough decisions, and that means cutting spending. Now, the millionaire tax that was part of the, the circuit breaker, uh, I voted for. It would affect 137 people in my district and provide relief to over 90%. But this idea that we either have to increase taxes uh, or increase taxes are alternatives that we shouldn't be faced with. And that's a byproduct of dysfunctional Albany where Sheldon Silver has backed the, everybody in the legislature into such a corner that rank and file members are willing to stand up and say, you know what, we can make cuts down the board. 
There's no reason why in the vast majority of programs in the New York State budget, we can't make an across the board three to 4% cut and have real savings in the billions of dollars throughout the state. Families in my district and throughout the state are forced to tighten their belt. They're forced to make tough decisions. And the only people not making tough decisions today are legislators who are spending like drunken sailors. But like I've said before, the difference between legislators and sailors, sailors spend their own money. Thank you. How many people in this room are from the Yorktown Taxpayers Reform Group? I don't know exactly what, um, how many times have you heard Mr. Ball guarantee you that he would never vote for a tax increase as long as he served in the New York State Assembly? Well, he broke another promise to you folks. There's $900 million of excess revenue that's in that circuit breaker tax law that frankly, the state is just gonna spend like they've been doing for eternity. It is time to turn the table. It is time to say it's time to cut taxes, cut spending. The last debate Mr. Ball and I had, I said, Mr. Ball, I'm not in favor of a property tax cap. I'm in favor of cutting spending. Next thing you know, there's that video YouTube, and it says, here's John Degnan saying he's not in favor of a property tax cap. On the contrary, we need change in Albany. We need people who are going to go up there anew people who are gonna go up there, come across the aisle, and make sure that everybody in the Assembly and the Senate hears about the crisis that's going on in the 99th Assembly District and throughout this state. I know there are people who are gonna be cold in their homes this coming winter, right here in the 99th Assembly District. Mr. Ball went back to the Assembly. He made a big show of bringing a bus ride, a bunch of voters from up here, and some of you are probably from uh, the audience attended that. But when it came time to debate on the floor of the assembly, not one word, not one statement from Mr. Ball about what this means to the people in the 99th. Instead, he cast his vote and he came running home. The point is that Mr. Ball is not representing us in Albany. He makes a great show of events down here in, in our district, and yet there is no work to show for it. He claims to be part of 300 bills, yeah, as a co-sponsor. Guess what, anybody, in the assembly can decide to join on a bill. Mr. Ball not has true. not passed one single prime sponsored bill in his time in office. Check the record. Uh, Mr. Degnan will be up first on this question, which is about member items. Uh, and just to clarify, a member item, which its detractors call pork, is the process where legislators bring money back to their districts for special interest projects that are initiated by constituents. Member item spending in New York State currently totals $200 million. There is a proposal in Albany to reduce that amount to $150 million. Please state your position on member item spending. It's your Mr. turn. <clears throat> Depending on when you're looking at the New York State budget, we're somewhere between 130, 120, and 130 billion dollars. 200 million dollars is a small percentage on that, but it is still a ton of money. And we know that if you're in the majority, then you bring home lots of member items. If you're in the minority, you don't. I'm a Republican. I'm standing in front of you here today saying, make the member items part of the cuts. Understand that if we take the initiative that we show optimism and we show leadership in how we run Albany, that it can have a positive impact on how people look at county governments and smaller municipal governments. We must find a way to do more with less. And it comes back to tax cuts. Tax spending needs to come down. 